All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jane, and welcome to what hopefully becomes a functioning YouTube channel. Um, today, I watched Sarah Shower's video where she turns herself into her dad and then says affirming things into the camera. And that, combined with the, frankly, um, astounding amount of McRoy content I've consumed these past few weeks have made me want to do the exact same thing. Now, I'm going to do my makeup in a traditionally masculine way, uh, put on my best southern boy voice, and give you guys some affirmations that you might not receive otherwise. I think technically this would work better if I had, um, an audience, but, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, all I'm doing is giving kids kind words that they might not receive otherwise, and I don't ever want to live in a world where that's frowned upon. Am I right, kids? Let's go. My shirt's on inside out. That's why the buttons don't work. I'm a disaster. Uh, yeah, it's also midnight, the best time to start things. Yeah, so hi, welcome to me. Um, <laughs> I'm impulsive and sad, and so... I have a plan for the makeup look. Do not have a plan for what to talk about in the meantime. How are y'all's quarantine? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm doing much, much better. Um, introspection is good for the soul. Uh, whoever said the unexamined life is not worth living um, was correct. And college, I love it. I love it so much. I love learning and I love being graded and I love my friends and I love having a routine but also sometimes you can take a month off and not do any of those things and your mental health does better honestly it's frightening as as just a, as the little kid that thrived off of like everyone liking me all the time and just like every time I got a report card it was like if they don't like me I'm gonna die being able to like be in quarantine and not think about things for an amount of time and also like realize that I don't care as much as I thought I did, it's it's frightening. Honestly, it's it's been a strange time for everyone, but mostly me. I don't mean mostly me. I yeah. When I was uh <laughs> when I was first applying to college, I was very nervous for some reason that I wouldn't get in. Just, you know, my irrational anxiety fears they weren't good or valid or like true in any way uh you know so what i did was i went on youtube and i looked up uh videos of people getting rejected <laughs> from colleges to make me feel better about myself i don't know where this story is going i don't know the point but just like that that's been my vibe you know like i need to be better than people but honestly, one thing that quarantine is teaching me is, no, one, you don't need to be, and two, you're just not. Like, hello? Yeah. It's been watching a lot of YouTube, trying to, like, make sure other people are not doing okay as well. Like, yeah, it's comforting when other people are not doing great either, because then you can be like, oh yeah, thank you. Wondering if I should even talk about what I'm doing with my makeup. I have done stage makeup a couple of times. And that's really the only reason I do makeup anymore. Is when I get inspiration from like a specific look or a specific vibe or something. Um, I love doing makeup. But it's either all or nothing. And so if I don't have... I'm not the kind of girl that wakes up every morning and puts on all the makeup. And puts on like lip gloss and mascara and stuff just to go to class. Because no sir. <laughs> That is not the vibe. I, I wake up 15 minutes before class on a good day. And that now that I'm in quarantine, I wake up not at all. So I don't do makeup unless I have something creative to do it for. So like sometimes when I'm just vibing and like doing this and I come out of my room with a full like face at 2 a.m., my friends are like, oh, you're good at makeup? And I'm like, yes, I'm just a failure. <laughs> and I just don't do makeup that often because I don't know why. I don't even know why. Yeah, so we're chiseling, chiseling my, my jaw. Uh, thankfully, 
my 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 own father, mine own father, did did bestow onto me already his uh, forehead and hairline. So we're just gonna enhance what God gave me right there, and but we're gonna make my brows big and bushy, and not do eyeshadow like like a minimum a minimal amount of eyeshadow, but maybe we will talk about like some clear mascara. That's a lip pencil. Don't use that on your eyebrows. I mean, you could. That's another thing. Like, I don't do makeup the way that other people think I should do makeup. Like, I show up with, like, four different liquid lips on my eyes, and everyone's like, hello? <laughs> like, what are you doing? And I'm like, living. <laughs> you know? I don't remember what I was talking about. I've been consuming a lot of YouTube and McElroy Brothers content, and... It makes me happy. There are wholesome men in the world. There are men who respect by women. And there are men who are good to women and to everyone. And there are people who are in committed relationships and who are good people. And it's, it's so good to remember sometimes just like, yeah, the world is hard. And everybody is living a life that is sad and lonely and exhausting. But at the end of the day, there are still people that love other people. Let's let's maybe contour my nose a little bit more. And let's put some brow gel on. That's a good idea. I have... That was a very dramatic brow hair that I just drew. I'm not sure if she's going to stay. Can you see? She, she goes way further up. Way further up. She just... She wanted to see the Lord. I'm not going to deny her that. That... Is that sparkly for a man? I'm not going to tell a man that he can't wear sparkles, but this man in particular, we're going for, like, the Bible teacher aesthetic, like, West Virginia truck, <laughs> West Virginia truck, <laughs> that is the gender we are, uh, we are trying to evoke, West Virginia, Chevy Silverado, uh, uh, I don't have a garage. I have a carport that I built myself from, like, Home Depot, and it's gonna fall down. That's the vibe. Because these are the men that I need affirmation from. Just, you know, the, the most hick, the most, like, God-fearing, just, yeah, somewhere in between... Clint McElroy and dude who built an underground bunker. Just, you know, a little bit of southern, southern stiff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the words that I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything. It's too late for me to be up. However, I'm here. I committed. I got my camera out. She's going on the internet too bad, you know? Uh, let me see. What what did I do the one time I had a beard? The last time I had a full-on beard, it was for a Lord of the Rings theme party. I was Aragorn, and the, the, the invitation in my defense did say, costumes welcome. Um, however, I was the only one. Which just exposed the theater kid in me way more than I had expected it to, and I showed up, and they said, oh! Your costume looks so good, ignoring the fact that I was in drag. And so, uh, it didn't awaken anything in me, but it had the potential to. And my friends were all like, now I just look dirty. That was just the equivalent of putting my face in a puddle of mud. That was not the vibe we are going for. What do we do to fix it? We bring out the shitty foundation that we don't care about. The one from CVS that we don't care about wasting, and we white out our mistakes. I look like a feral child that someone found in the woods. Why do I just look dirty? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no. I look like a werewolf, or like someone badly portraying a werewolf. I look like someone saw Twilight. Someone saw Twilight, but they were on a plane, <laughs> and they fell asleep, <laughs> and 
they and they just came to the conclusion that werewolves look like hell spawn. I really like my face shape. I feel like it would not lend itself well to facial hair, however. Yeah, okay. I, w I also when I was watching the 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 Sarah Shower video after that, I saw Brittany Broski's video where she was a uh, she turned herself into a TikTok girl and she was like, "I hate my oval-shaped face." And I was like, "Girl, we have all been told our entire life that oval is like the ideal face shape. Am I wrong about that? Does, doesn't like every magazine be like, if you're an oval, you can pull off any hairstyle and the boys love you. And so she was like, I hate my oval forehead. And I was like, what do you call this then? I have an oval forehead, hello? Okay, this is not getting better, but it's not getting worse. So let's go in and try to make some beard hairs. One thing that I think would make this better at this point is because I'm almost done with the eye region. Okay, let's put on a little bit of contour as eyeshadow to just deepen our sockets. And then we will add beard hairs and maybe some wrinkles. Because we are going for an older man. Not like that, but also like that. Um. No, not like that. <laughs> oh my god. If my parents, or like anyone that matters, oh no. See, I need internet fame before I tell my parents anything. I need to say, wait a minute. Before, before you say anything, hear me out. No doubt, I promise I'm not being sexy on the internet. So who who would find this sexy? Not, not I. Not I, said the fly. Oh no. Should I add mascara? The only mascara I have in my makeup kit right now is the stage makeup that um sticks and does not come off because it's waterproof. And I just don't think that would be a healthy decision for me to make. One, because it is midnight. And two, because it's my face. And that's permanent. And three, because I'm quarantining in a house full of other people who have to see me and have work obligations in the morning and who are going to notice if I come down to eat my customary breakfast of an egg sandwich and just sadness uh, with a beard on. And they're going to say, hello, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> what, <laughs> what? And I'm going to say, the internet and they are going to say I knew it <laughs> how dare you get out of my house and I'm going to say but, but papa yes, we are social distancing and he is going to say social distancing be damned you are no longer my kid and I'm going to say ah it is for the best um so that was a dramatic fantasy do any of y'all astral project like to avoid arguments you think about like, is it even worth arguing at this point? And so you just like astral project to yourself being on Oprah in the future and like ranting about what is happening now so that you don't have to think about it. Is that glittery? It's glittery. It's going on my face anyway. It's fine. Glitter beards. Natalie Wynn said they're okay. Contrapoint said glitter beards are okay. 2020 glitter beards. Also, what's her face? Did Ariel Fulmer do glitter beards? No, she did sticker beards. Hello. Um, I consumed a fair amount, uh, I think six or seven episodes of Taz Graduation last night. Uh, I fell asleep listening to it, and I woke up listening to it, and I listened to it all a fair amount of the day. And let me just say, I admire the fear bulk, and I do love how he managed to denounce math, capitalism, classism, and also, like, everything else, homophobia <laughs> and racism, in, like, two minutes. It, 
it is good quality content and it makes my heart happy. I am now remembering that the last time I made a beard on myself, it took about three hours and we do not have that kind of time. Well, arguably I do. <laughs> I do have that kind of time. The question is, am I going to give the time to this? And I think the answer is, oh hell no. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not done, but I am done with this part for now. Let us proceed to something that will make me happy. Uh, let us maybe do some wrinkles and maybe let's work on our on our boy haircut oh this takes me back to middle school when I wanted to cut my hair and my mother said no I had the longest most curly thick hair and I said can I cut it I want a pixie cut with a side shave like the cool boys and my mother said no and I said please mama and she said no. So I would tuck my hair on top of my head like this. And I would put a beanie over my hair like this. And I would say, this is me on the internet. This is me, a child on the internet. And the internet said, you are valid and good. And I said, oh, thank the Lord. Um, I look like if Brian David Gilbert was in One Direction. That's not a bad thing. I do not think that it is the elderly southern man aesthetic that I said we were going for when I detailed this in the beginning of the video. So. Oh, this looks better. Okay, okay. Okay. Yep. Depth, baby. That's narrative depth, baby. I have not seen Tiger King. I'm not sure if that's a flex. I haven't seen it. Nor do I care to. There's a wrinkle there, there's a wrinkle there. French. Oh, there, yes. There we go. Now I was just scratching my nose. Oh no, the pencil was pointy, so I scratched my nose with it and I made a grave mistake. Oh no. Oh, that's ugly as sin. But also, aren't dads? No, I'm sorry, at all the dads listening, I'm sorry. However, if that statement applies to you, maybe get on that, sir. <laughs> maybe improve yourself, 2020. That's one thing. I really started this with like, the full three pages of notes, Instagram post, just really 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 wanting this year to be better I started you know I was like I've come all this way don't stop me now you know I was going and then I was not going no more due to unforeseen circumstances beyond our control vibe checked and not sure what to say about that experience yet What's another thing? I need more people to tell me that it's okay to not know things. I, there's such an emphasis on knowing things. And because I am the little teacher's pet aiming to please, uh, 27,000% of the time, oh no, I, I do aim a fair amount of the time to know things. I, I really do. But sometimes, even thinking about trying to begin to know things is just too much and I cannot and that needs to be okay especially right now yeah. figure yourself out get a new hobby enjoy yourself but, uh, how where you know I'm I'm focusing on myself I'm listening to my body I'm sleeping I'm eating I'm watching the McElroys, <laughs> my emotional support podcasters, but I'm not going to come out of this enlightened. I'm not, well, I wish I was Henry David Thoreau, honestly. If some, yeah, if any of y'all <laughs> want to sponsor my year-long Walden crisis, I'm okay with that. 
but also, like, I don't want that to be expected of me, you know? Like, for as much as I am improving, I don't think it's because people are dying in the world. I think it's because I have the time and less financial pressure to be able to focus on myself. Which is like, when people say money can't buy happiness, honestly, money can't buy joy, but money can for sure buy happiness. Because joy and happiness are different. Joy is just, you know, the incessant, constant notion of being free, being alive, being okay, being happy. And you can access joy no matter where you are. You can be in the depths of despair, just going through it, and still have joy. Whether that's from outside connections, a religion, a moral compass, a goal, anything. You can have joy no matter where you are. Happiness, however, is subjective. And that's just, you know... Like, that, that really does, happiness really is affected by what you have access to. You know, I, I feel happier when I don't have to worry about paying my rent or feeding myself or my friends or anyone that I've taken care of at the moment. I feel happier when I am safe and secure and I know where I'm going to sleep and everything so like money what money can buy will serve to make me happier up to a certain extent yes okay I think I'm about done with this dad look, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get some dad's accessories, dad accessories, if you will, and I'm going to come back with a southern accent to give y'all affirmations um, of love and commitment, maybe, if that <laughs> is what you're into, if that is what you need from a father. Howdy, y'all. My name is Scooter McMacintosh. In case you haven't heard it from a father figure in your life recently, Trans rights, gay rights, lesbian rights, non-binary rights, pansexual rights, gay rights, did I get everyone, bisexual rights, asexual rights, aromantic rights, demisexual rights, demiromantic rights, gender fluid rights, rights all around, just like beers for my buds. Yeehaw. Son, daughter, child, kin, child, if you're feeling real spicy, I love you. You are my pride and my joy. I have never done a better thing in my life than birth slash take care of slash become part of your life, your world, and I thank you for letting me in and letting me be whatever part I am <laughs> in your world. Uh, you mean everything to me. You give my life meaning. You give my life joy. I promise that I will work hard to keep you safe and happy and healthy and warm and loved. Child, I love you with every part of my being and I hope that one day you will see that every person that you encounter in your life is worthy of the same love and respect as everyone else. There is no one in this family or on this earth that deserves any amount of disrespect or hate simply for being who they are. I want to raise you and remind you to be kind, to be considerate, to be smart, to be intelligent, to be well informed, 
to a, a, a safe place for people who need it. Be kind to everyone. Be friends with everyone. Give second chances. But don't be afraid to cut people off when they get in between you and your health, your safety, your happiness, your sanity. I'm sorry if there was a person in your life who was ever like that or ever not there for you the way you needed them to be. And I, as a weird YouTuber on the internet, not as any kind of father personality promise, that as long as I, Jane, the owner of this YouTube channel, am here, you will be cared for by at least one person. It me. Uh, folks, that took a weird ride. Uh, that, it's been an hour and 30 minutes since I started this project. I'm not sure why. <laughs> it, but I hope that whatever you needed to hear was in there. Um, as I said, this was inspired by Sarah Shower. Please go watch her video. She does it a lot better because she has fan uh, submissions and they're really funny. It's like, you know, what did you want your dad to always say to you? And one of the answers is like, I came back with the milk kind of stuff. But this was just something that was on my heart. Uh, you need to know that there are wholesome men and women out there. But for me, the, the McElroy brothers and a lot of other uh, really good men have been showing up in the in the content I have been consuming recently. And it's it's just good to know sometimes they're out there. They, they love you. And, you know, even if you've never had anyone actually say these things to you aloud, um, here they are. And I hope, <laughs> I hope that whoever sees this, uh, you vibe and you feel that I gave you something because I know that most of those things were mostly spoken to myself or a younger version of who I thought I was. Uh, but it's important for me to know that I did my part in putting the, message, the messages that I needed out there in the world. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I have an outro yet. Uh, be who you need. Be who you need to see in the world. Uh, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes. Yep, <laughs> that's it. <laughs>